Hi everybody, Matt Burney here taking a look at the Maryland Millions Classic at Laurel Park on Saturday afternoon, race number 11. You can play this race as well as the rest of the card on DRF Bets. Head on over to bets.drf.com for all the latest as far as offers for new subscribers is concerned. Let's take a look at this field. Now, I'm going to be totally up front with you. Very difficult to handicap this race considering the main contenders are listed on the also eligible list. The number 11, Hammer and Hammer. The number 12, Bell 4, and the number 13, Bonus Points. If any of them draw in, they're probably going to win. So instead, we're left just quickly dissecting a field that could drastically change if any one of those three enters the field. Uh, the number one is Crouchelli. This is a horse that is only a one time of victory from 10 lifetime starts. Came in a maiden claiming race, in for the waiver tag. Doesn't have a lot of early speed. I don't think there's a heck of a lot to like here, but to be honest with you, this horse isn't that far off from the rest of the runners in this field should this field stay intact as is. The number two is Do That Dance. Another horse, a little bit of a nibbler. Three for 31 lifetime, 10 times second or third from 31 lifetime starts. Has a number of speed figures that would make this one a legitimate contender, and I think for that reason alone, you have to look at that and say at 12 to 1 on the morning line, a little bit of an intriguing entrant. The number three is Clubman. Now, Clubman, I think, is going to get bet from the 9 to 2 morning line. Sheldon Russell has the mount going out for Jonathan Maldonado. This is a horse that has good early speed. I'm not totally convinced that this distance is really what he wants. But to be honest with you, if he gets back to the best form that we had seen from him over the winter, I think he's a major, major player in a race like this. He has a little bit of versatility in a race that doesn't have a ton of speed. Let's let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector just to illustrate how little speed there actually is. See that blue bar indicating a slow pace, perhaps helping those horses that are forwardly placed. They have the 6, the 9, and the 7 out there. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that changed just based on the riders looking at this race saying there isn't much speed. Use a little bit early on for some of these horses that maybe they wouldn't be necessarily more forwardly placed. But in a race like this where there really is no speed, maybe some of these horses are a little bit more aggressively ridden. Number four is Flash McCall. Flash McCall is a nice horse, but again, a little bit of a nibbler. Three for 25 lifetime, eight times second or third from 25 lifetime starts. Has done his best running at Laurel. All three victories have come there 17 times he has run. The distance, I'm not totally convinced. He's 0 for 3 at it in the past, and it seems like they have really tried to maintain him at these shorter one-turn distances, seven-eighths of a mile, a one-turn mile. Um, if you think he can get a little bit closer Perhaps he's interesting, but again, he's one that's really been accustomed to coming from much farther off the pace. He's 6-1 to one on the morning line. Trevor McCarthy has the mount. The 5 is Legend's Hope. Talk about a nibbler. 2 for 33 lifetime, 9 times. Second or third from 33 lifetime starts. And plain and simple, not fast enough on paper. The good news is you have a little bit of tactical speed second off the bench. Perhaps this one takes a step forward. Number 6, Call Pal. Or Pal Cal, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. 3 for 19 overall. But 13 times second or third, another one that's just a little bit of a nibbler. And again, if you really want to throw even more sort of concern for this horse, he's two for two on a wet track. One for 17 on a fast main surface with 13 second or third place finishes. He has a little bit of tactical speed, so perhaps he can be closer to the pace. I don't think he's totally out of the realm of possibility as a three-year-old here, but there is a part of me that thinks he is best used underneath as well. The number seven horse in here is Saratoga Bob. Now, Saratoga Bob has some things going for him. He has some speed figures in his corner. Most recently, highest last out buyer in the field with a 78. That came in a one-turn mile, washed off the turf. The concern, he faded in that race, and I'm not totally convinced that additional real estate is going to be his friend. Two starts back, I think, to date, the best run of his career came at six furlongs. Don't know that this added distance going two turns is going to be to his liking, but strictly from a speed figure standpoint, he probably makes the most sense in the entire race. The number eight is Good Luck Jonathan. Good Luck Jonathan, one for 15 lifetime, eight times second or third, seven of those being third place finishes. I guess it's a good thing that his only victory came at Laurel Park. He's one for 10 there. Perhaps he's one where the distance isn't going to be a disaster and maybe he would actually appreciate a little bit more. He has a little bit of versatility. I think at 10 to 1, this is a little bit of an interesting chance because, again, some, so many of these other horses don't want the distance or at face value, it doesn't look like they do. And he has a little bit of versatility that could go a long way. Note that win three starts back. I know it came over a sloppy sealed racing surface, but perhaps he can be forwardly placed and the distance won't be to his sort of undoing. 10 to 1 on the morning line for the 8. Good luck, Jonathan. Number nine, Admiral Blue. Talk about a horse that, from a speed figure standpoint, co highest last out in the field with a 78. He has run 90 plus buyers in the past. That certainly makes him a major, major player in a race like this. The concern, he's two for 21. 
And he's finished second three times and third once. He is another nibbler in a race filled with nibblers, as is, unless you have those horses draw in from the also eligible list. Admiral Blue has a little bit of tactical speed. He can perhaps be into the run a little bit earlier. Um, I don't know that the distance is necessarily a, a, to his detriment. I think to his detriment is the fact that he doesn't like to win races, but he has run respectable going two turns in the past. I think that at least gives him a puncher's chance in a race like this filled with horses that, again, like it or not, they just don't seem to really want to go this distance or win some races. Uh, and the 10 is Tattooed. Tattooed is a horse that... I suppose if you're looking for just the lightly raced horses that have at least proven that they like to win races, maybe Tattooed is for you at 20-1 to 1 with Fergal Lynch aboard. Uh, two for seven lifetime, three times in the exacta from seven lifetime starts. The problem is, from a speed figure standpoint, woefully, woefully slow. Little bit on the slow side. Needs to be really kind of stepping the game up to the next level if this horse is really going to be considered a threat in this race on Saturday afternoon. That rounds out the body of the field. I can't stress this enough. This race changes, the complexion of it changes entirely if any one of the three also eligibles draws in. They immediately probably become odds on, whether it is the 11 Hammer and Hammer, whether it was the 12 Belfour or the 13 Bonus Points. If any of them draw in, they're odds on. If all three of them draw in, all of a sudden it becomes a little bit of a more intriguing race. But until we find out what the situation is, I'm going to have to leave that up to you guys as the handicappers. It's an interesting race. I suppose you can go a few different ways in here. We're going to take a look at my pick. If this field stays in this sort of form, and this is the field that goes, these are the 10, I'll go with the three club man, simply because I think there's a scenario where he's actually the best of the lot. He may not love the distance, but I at least know that he has some tactical speed, and he's run relatively fast in the past, and he's done his best at Laurel, and he likes to win races. He's won five of his 20 lifetime starts. Give me the number three club man. In the 11th race at Laurel Park on Saturday afternoon, a mile and an eighth on the main track, it is the $150,000 Maryland Million Classic. And again, I can't stress it enough. If any one of those three horses from the AE list draw in, you really need to consider them because they lay over the rest of this field as far as ability and figures are concerned. If you're playing the Maryland Million Classic or any of the other races from Laurel Park on Saturday afternoon, check out DRF Bets. All sorts of good deals, particularly for new sign-up members. Head on over to bets.drf.com for all the latest details. Schedule post time for the 11th race at Laurel on Saturday, the Maryland Million Classic, 537 Eastern. Good luck.